Okay, rhythm guitar do's and don'ts. This, these are things that I hear a lot of people do if they're new to swing rhythm guitar. Sometimes they're very accomplished players in other areas, and it usually comes down to um, you know something simple which you can fix very quickly. So these are the sorts of things that I watch out for. There's really three issues that normally crop up. The first thing is that people tend to overemphasize the two and four like massively. Um, so you get this kind of sound. You know, or the, yeah, which can be exacerbated by using the wrong techniques. And it might be going, which just sounds wrong, okay? So you've got to make sure you're setting your body up right physically. Watch the other video for that, my video on basic rhythm guitar. Um, you have to do it right, otherwise it doesn't really work. It's like playing the drums. Um, the physical aspect of it is, is important for creating the feel. Okay, so when you uh, when you do that, uh, make sure that you play one and three. So, um, you know, you can... Almost rake through one and three a bit, you know, you can break up the chords a little bit. Slow, that, slow, that, slow, that, slow, that. That's better than going... Which starts to sound a bit like, um, you know, well, reggae or something, you know, if you do it to the extreme. Okay, second thing is um, no upstrokes, please. This is very, this is very, uh, what's the word, very, uh, this can be a tough one to shift, okay, the upstrokes thing, because you often ghost upstrokes without even realising it. pick is just going over the strings so you don't want that sound uh, especially not if it's kind of tripletized you know like it's going to... I'm exaggerating here I don't think anybody does it that much but you definitely don't want that you want straight you should be able to swing on quarter notes um, you don't need off beats to swing the length of your notes will give that because you've got to play them like Fat, but you know, not too long. So not this, and not this, like this. And in some styles of gypsy jazz are very, you know, they're very kind of like um, percussive. I, I don't really like that real short kind of style. It can work, you know, but I find it a bit, you know, I mean. Depends on context, I guess. Some people make it sound good. Uh, I prefer to have more of this kind of... Kind of, you know, bounce to it, which comes from getting the notes the right length, which you control with your left hand muting. Okay? No upstrokes in any case. Last thing, don't always play loud. Don't do this. Because... That might work if you're playing acoustically with a band with like, I don't know, clarinet, trombone, trumpet, and drums. <laughs> but if you're trying to support somebody in a, you know, string band, <laughs> you know, like violin or especially another guitar, then that's going to be overbearing, especially on a loud, you know, D hole guitar like this. It's going to be too much. So really get used to kind of. <laughs> important make sure you don't speed up or slow down sometimes when people go louder they speed up sometimes when they go quieter they slow down so make sure that you're not doing that you might want to record yourself on your iPhone if you've got one you know or whatever it's just a low quality recording will be fine and then listen back to it and go mm, I'm speeding up there or slowing down if you find that that's happening then um, maybe you should practice with a metronome for a bit or just practice playing along with records um, although <laughs> not the original swing records speed up and slow down quite a bit so um, now it's more music is more metronomic than it was in the early days, I think. Um, but you know, it's good not to speed up and slow down too much, and be able to create a push without rushing the tempo. You know, for example. Um, so uh, that's really covers it. I mean, uh, keep it simple. Stupid is a definite do. Uh, don't don't overcomplicate things. Like the upstrokes are uh, overcomplicating it. Um, 
make sure that you're creating the support for the other musicians, listen to the whole ensemble, try and be aware of everything that's going on if you can and your place in it. Um, and uh, yeah, make sure you're playing the acoustic guitar if you're playing pre-war jazz, don't play an electric if it's the wrong sound. Uh, you'll get the wrong feel. Some people are very deft at kind of, you know, managing to get a good sound out of an electric, but for this kind of stuff, I think, you know, it's got to be an acoustic guitar for the woman, and if it isn't, then it's not. You know, you're really entering the realm of the 1950s. Uh, not there's anything wrong with that at all, I love 1950s music as well, but, you know, it's just a different sound. Okay, well, I mean, I hope that was of some use and uh, <laughs> gave you an idea of, you know, of what, 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 what's right and wrong, and if you find yourself doing any other things, don't be embarrassed, because everybody does them you know there's recordings of me on youtube where i'm playing upstrokes so if you want to check me out um, a couple of years back when i wasn't quite as uh, aware of that sort of thing as i am now then you can uh, laugh and um you know see that uh, nobody's immune to this kind of thing so don't feel bad if you are making these mistakes but it's good to have them pointed out to you and it's good to listen to recordings to make sure that you're not doing it and if you are you can maybe fix it just by concentrating on that in your practice okay well that was useful and uh well see you all soon bye